Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the second part of this comparison between my Google 6 Pro and my Sony a7 IV. If you haven't already, I highly suggest you go check out the first part of this comparison, where I'm in the field taking pictures with both of these cameras, and you can try and guess which one is which. Now let's get started with this in-depth comparison and analysis of both of these cameras. But first, let's roll the intro. In the last few weeks, I've been going through over 5,000 images, and this is because I was taking a raw image and a JPEG image for every single shot, so I had four images for every single shot. I selected the best 550 images out of that and posted them on our website, so go check out the link down in the description if you want to be able to compare them by yourself. One thing I want to say is that it was very hard when looking at the images on my iPad to distinguish which camera was which, but I selected some of the images to really show the comparison and show where they differ. So we're going to look at them now right away by starting with dynamic range. Okay, so if you look at the images now, on the left right here we have the picture from the Sony and on the right we have the pictures from the Go 6 Pro. So if you look at the images here, they're very similar in terms of dynamic range. So both have a lot of details inside of the shadows, inside of the highlights. They have no problem at all in both cases to keep most of the details. If you look at the second image here, there might be a little bit more detail in the shadows here inside of the Sony camera, but again, not a big difference between the two. One thing I really like seeing is that both keep some shadows inside of the faces in here because that was a very sunny day, so it wouldn't be normal if there were no shadows at all. So it's nice to see that both keep this in their editing. But now if you look at this example here, I actually think that the Google Pixel 6 Pro did a better job. It kept more detail inside of the face, where on the Sony right here, we can see that it overblown some of the parts, which is not something that looks that good in the end. So you have to be careful with faces. You don't have something that becomes completely white. This is where we start seeing bigger difference right here. So we're gonna see on Sony shot, uh, it's much darker inside of the shadows inside of the tree, where here the, uh, the Google Pixel 6 Pro actually brought out the shadows completely. Uh, I'm not sure which one looks better, but what's very interesting here is actually the sky, where you see it's much more retained inside of a Google Pixel 6 shot than on my Sony camera, which has a harder time here with some of the white parts because it's not doing all kinds of crazy things to try and keep all the detail inside of the highlights and the shadows. Again, this is one place where I think there's a very big difference. Uh, we're gonna see in the background of these images, these portrait images, we have much more details inside of the Google 6 Pro shot then the one on the Sony here, the Sony here has a hard time and just brings everything to almost pure white. Yes, I could go inside of Lightroom and try and edit these images and get a little bit more detail, uh, but straight out of the camera and quickly editing both of these, you get uh, these results. So this is pretty impressive that Google 6 Pro just by default has so much more information inside of the shot. Uh, but it's not always a good thing to have so much information inside of the shadows. So for example, on this shot right here of the nice little architecture, I think the uh, Google Pixel 6 Pro went overboard on here uh, with the shadows and actually created these weird colors on the side here, which don't really look good because it's so dark here actually. I didn't have enough information to create anything that was good. Uh, so in this case, the algorithm went a little bit too far and tried too much to bring out some shadows. Another inf interesting thing to see is I talked about it quickly, but there's a lot more information inside the sky. So if you look at right here on the Go 6 Pro, we're gonna see that around the, the building right here, um, we still have very bright blue skies, where if you look on the other side right here, we're gonna see that especially around the sun, uh, we're getting a lot more white and we don't have as much detail inside of the sky. And this is something that continues in all the other shots around here. We all have more information inside of the sky of the Google 6 Pro. Some would say that that's more uh, natural to have less information like this because it's a little bit more what we saw with our eyes. Uh, but again, it really depends what you prefer. Both are fine in the end. Uh, it's not a big difference. The theme continues here. We're gonna have, we're gonna see that these sunset shots, there's much more information inside of the Google shots here. They keep uh, the shadows way up. I personally prefer the look of the Sony camera, but I could probably on the Sony also bring up the shadows if I wanted to get something a little bit more similar. One very impressive example here, again with portraits. I think a lot of times here, the Google 6 Pro just does a better job of portraits. Look at this background here. We basically have no information inside of this shot. And I didn't try inside of this image to recover it. Instead of Lightroom, I probably could do some work to try and get them. But straight out of the Google 6 Pro, we can see right here, there's a lot more information inside of the sky, but we still see my friend Nicholas 
perfectly fine in the shot. So this is very impressive and I have a few other shots from that night. And look at these. It's incredible all the detail we're getting inside of the backgrounds here but that we don't get inside of the shots of the Sony camera. So very impressive here that we're keeping so much detail inside of the background because this is actually a very complex shot because backgrounds with sunsets are very bright but then the foreground of my friends in here were pretty dark in the end so very tricky shot. The next thing I want to talk about is the colors inside of the images and if you look at the colors here we're going to see that throughout the range my Google 6 Pro really likes first of all keeping a lot of detail inside of the skies we already talked about that but also make the pictures very blue so if you look at the first examples here we're going to see at night it's incredible how blue the image is inside of the pixel shot I actually think my Sony captured this more realistically it was a bit more like this more yellow inside of the sky not as blue as the pixel just did uh, same thing again here we're going to see a lot of blue inside of this shot a lot more uh, blue inside of the sky also but if we look at the bottom here we're going to see it's just way more blue overall if we look at these shots here i think we see a huge difference between the two here so this one is just warmer in general where the pixel again a little bit too blue to my taste i don't know why they go so blue because it definitely wasn't as blue uh, that day it was probably more realistic on the sony right here uh, and again here i think the colors here on the google shot are much more natural it was a really nice sunset uh, with the light we had here on my friend nicholas where here we just see that the sony had a hard time with the highlights and just kind of lost the colors inside of the bright part of his face where here there's no at all um, lost inside of the colors here on the face on the Google 6 Pro. Again, we talked about here the backgrounds here, incredible how much detail they keep. But again, this is kind of the inverse. Uh, we're gonna see that here, the Sony, uh, my Sony decided to be very blue and my Google 6 Pro decided to be very yellow. So it's kind of weird sometimes. They tend to not uh, agree exactly how they wanna be. But overall, I would say the colors are very similar on both of these cameras. Now let's look at the detail inside of these shots. And this is one place where I think we're gonna see some of the biggest difference between both cameras. So in general, they look very similar. So if you look at the images here, they're very similar uh, when we're looking at them, especially if you look at them on an iPad or your phone or something like that. So again, architecture here, they both look sharp, detailed, uh, and no problem at all. If there's a lot of light, they actually look very, very similar. I actually got those two mixed up and thought that this one, which is from my Google 6 Pro, was actually, I thought it was from my Sony camera. So just to show that sometimes when I was looking at them quickly, even I had a hard time telling which one was which. But I think the big difference is if we come to the next image here and we start pixel peeping inside of the image. So if I zoom in inside of the towers here and zoom inside of the towers right here, we're gonna see here that on the Google Shots, they really over sharpened them to try and bring back some details. Some people like it, uh, but here the Sony, just because it has a bigger sensor, has more resolution, or twice the resolution, it just has more resolution and more detail by default inside of the shots. So I just think that most of the cases here, uh, the Sony shots are definitely better, especially if you plan on printing them or something like that. I actually did a test at different focal lengths. So if you look at here, we're around 28 millimeters on both of these shots. So this is the main lens of the uh, Google Pixel 6 Pro. One big problem we're gonna see here is that, again, there's not much sharpening on side of this image, but here it's kind of incredible how much sharpening they add. And this is one place where I think the Google could really improve because it's kind of annoying that they add so much sharpening. If we go at about 50 millimeters, which is a two times zoom, on the Go 6 Pro, it's gonna be a digital zoom, so it just doesn't look good. It looks like a total mess. If we compare this to the shot here on um, my Sony camera, we're just gonna see the Sony is way sharper. It looks better. There's more detail inside of the shot compared to the one from the Google uh, Pixel 6 Pro. If we look at the next one right here, we're gonna see that around four times zoom. So now we're at about 100 millimeters because we've switched to the telephoto lens on the Go 6 Pro. They now actually look pretty similar. They both look pretty good right here. Not much of a difference. Again, a little bit more over sharpening on the Go 6 Pro, but I could over sharpen the one on uh, the Sony A74 if I wanted to, but it's not something I do usually. And now if we're at eight times zoom, so about 200 millimeters, uh, we get the problem again here with just digital zoom on top so it doesn't look that good because they just over sharpen the whole image and I don't like images that are over sharpened digitally. One interesting thing right here is actually that if we look at both of these images on the Go 6 Pro most of the image is perfectly sharp but if we zoom on the picture from my DSLR the front here the people are sharp but not this in the background 
by accident I didn't look where my camera was focusing and it focused on the people not the background right here so I wanted the CD to be in focus but it's not the case and that's something you have to be very careful when using a DSLR is that you need to be sure where you're focusing to get uh, what you want inside of the shot in focus because if you don't control or change your f-stop or things like that you can very easily get some blurry parts where usually everything inside of a picture from a phone are perfectly sharp. Now if you look at the bokeh or background blur we actually see that it's quite different on both cameras so if you look at these shots right here on my Sony camera it's very natural there's a lot of nice background blur in the background here on my Google Pixel 6 Pro I didn't use the portrait mode because I was using the telephoto lens right here uh, but we both have a lot of details inside the shots here and get nice details inside of the uh, hair but this is normal because we're not using any portrait mode on the Google 6 Pro so if you come right here these shots are using portrait mode and if you look at here it actually does a good job of detecting all the little hairs at the background here and keeping them sharp and not blurring them out so both of these look pretty natural and look pretty good if you look at this shot too again i would say there's a lot of details inside of the hairs and you can see that google 6 pro has become much better at making it look more natural uh, the blur in the background i was actually pretty impressed with the next shots right here uh, because i was expecting here the google pixel 6 pro to have a much harder time with these types of shots where it's not clear what is the foreground and what is the background uh, they got almost everything perfectly right the only thing right here is actually underneath the knee where they didn't realize that that should this should be treated as a background, not be treated as the foreground. Uh, but on the side right here, it's very natural. They progressively add more and more blur to the background. So I was actually very impressed with these shots. If we look at two of these shots here, I think here uh, the portrait mode looks kind of unnatural. So it just added too much blur inside of the background. So if we look at the hairs right here, they cut around here and had a really hard time cutting out the hairs inside of these uh, images. So it's not always perfect. It's kind of hiss and miss. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not. In this case, portrait mode worked perfectly well. I didn't find anything that wasn't okay with this shot, but I still think that the one from the Sony just looks more natural because it's actual physical uh, blur. So I have a full video on uh, my last comparison where I explain what is the difference between portrait mode on a phone and actual physical lenses and how they work both of them. So if you're not sure to understand why these are different, you definitely should go check out that part of that video. Uh, here I would say sometimes people ask why having a blurred background is actually good. So if you look at this image here, we're going to see that even if the background is not very blurry on my Sony, there's just a nice little blur which really separates my subject, so here my friend Trevor, and the background. Where if we look at this image on the side here from the Google 6 Pro, because everything is perfectly sharp in the image, it really doesn't separate him from the foreground and just looks a little bit messier and it's a little harder to see him inside of the shot. So that's why having a little bit of blur is actually important. In these both cases, I think this one was a portrait mode photo from my Google 6 Pro and actually they look really good both of them. So in this case, taking flowers, this is very impressive that the Google 6 Pro can actually take some flowers using the portrait mode and get some great results. And there's some cases like these ones where they don't look as good. So definitely here, you kind of see that a portrait mode is having a really hard time determining what is foreground, uh, what is the background, what should be sharp and not. Or here, the pixel, uh, the shot from the Sony camera just looks perfectly fine throughout because it's totally natural blur in the foreground, but also the background here. Uh, so that's definitely one of the difference. So this is definitely an advantage of DSLRs is just how you can control the blur and you can get more or less as you want by controlling the settings on your cameras. One of the things I prefer comparing is actually the night photos and here it's actually really hard for both cameras. You can see that both here kind of had bad results in some of the use cases uh, just because it's so hard to take a picture without moving at all uh, that it, even in these cases both of them kind of have a hard time taking some shots. But now if you look at these images right here, one of the problems with the Sony camera is that right away when it started becoming darker, it started jet picking up the ISO and really bring it high. We're here with the night sight mode that enabled automatically on the Go 6 Pro. We got a nice sharp and detailed image that just looks a lot cleaner inside of the shot. If we look at the next example here, even though we have maybe a little bit more detail inside of the Sony shot, because there's so much noise, it's gonna be hard to recover even using noise reduction. We're again here, I think the shot on the Go 6 Pro kept a little bit more detail inside of it. Now if we look at the next shots right here we're going to see that because we're on a tripod we get a lot more detail inside of the shot from the Sony compared to the one from the Go 6 Pro and this is again just because we have more resolution and more control 
on the Sony camera when using long exposures. And this continues throughout. So if you look at the pictures here from the city, uh, this is especially visible if you're using the full-time telephoto zoom on the Go 6 Pro. I wouldn't recommend it to use it at night, even though you can use it. There's just not detail at all inside of these buildings here. We're here on the Sony. We still have a lot of details inside of the buildings at night. Um, and this is true for the next few shots that I'm going to go through. Now, if we go out completely and use the main lens on the Google 6 Pro, it, the difference is not as visible here. They both look pretty good. They're both sharp. They both have details inside of the city. Uh, so it's definitely better if you want to take some pictures at night on your phone to use your main lens and maybe not use a telephone lens or some of these special lens again. The difference are pretty much the same inside of the night shots here I took around Seattle. And if we pixel peep, we're going to see again a pretty big difference. So if we look at the buildings right here, um, we're going to see that we have a lot of detail inside of the Sony shot, but here inside of the Go 6 Pro, it's a little bit of a mess. There's a lot of detail that is lost because we're using the full-time telephoto lens at night. So definitely not something I would use. Some of the most impressive results we got is actually for the shot here of my friend. So we can see here that on the Sony camera, there's too much noise and had a hard time retaining some detail inside of my friend. Where here, the photo on my Google 6 Pro is actually super sharp, detailed, uh, and just looks a lot better in my opinion. There's more detail inside of the shot and it was actually really dark. So it's kind of impressive how much detail they kept inside of the Google 6 Pro shot. Again, here with my two friends side by side, this one looks very good. Even though I tweaked some settings here to get some better results on the Sony, I still think the one from my Google Pixel 6 Pro kind of looks better. So it's very impressive. I did a quick astro shot just to get some stars because we could see them. And here I'm a little bit disappointed because there's a little bit of color that's lacking inside of the Google 6 Pro. And if we look at the details here, we're definitely going to see a lot more stars inside of the Sony camera compared to uh, my Google 6 Pro. Uh, but this is to be expected. So if you want to be taking pictures of the stars and want to get more stars inside of your shot, definitely you should either use some manual apps and have a bunch of videos about how to take better shots of the stars using your phone or get a better camera like a DSLR is definitely gonna help get some more details inside of your night shots. The last thing I wanna look at here is the new motion mode inside of the Go 6 Pro because it actually came out really handy inside of this trip. So if you look at the images here, they're very similar. This is because I'm not using the motion mode inside of the pictures, but if we toggle to this one here, we're gonna see they creates a fake long exposure and it's incredible how it looks. It really looks good, it really looks natural, but it's actually using AI to create this. It's not at all a long exposure. I couldn't take a long exposure on my Sony camera just because we're on suspension bridge and couldn't keep the camera for like, let's say 10 seconds or something like that to get this nice detail inside of the uh, file right here. So what are your thoughts of this in-depth analysis and comparison? Do you agree with what I said? Are you surprised by the results? Let me know in the comments down below. If you haven't already, I highly suggest you go check out the first part of this comparison where I use both of these cameras in the field in the beautiful city of Vancouver. I haven't edited any of the pictures inside of this video and plan on making some editing videos for some of them. So if you wanna see me editing some of the photos, definitely let me know down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know by hitting the like button below and definitely subscribe for more content on photography and filmmaking. See you in the next one.